I assume that Beijing has a preference in the outcome of the upcoming election. How, if at all, do you think they will try to exercise influence to uh, shape the outcome of the election? Well, I'll start by saying that I think that the Chinese are not only nervous about Lai Chengde uh, for reasons of uh, some of the things he has said in the past, his party, of course, in particular, being seen as pro-independence, uh, but also with who is mayor of Tainan, that is, he's seen as coming more from the more radical end uh, of the spectrum of his party. They're also uneasy, I think, about Hoyoi. Um, he's Taiwanese. I think he reminds them of Li Donghui. <laughs> so um, uh, they don't know him very well. Uh, they do know Koenja uh, because as mayor of Taipei, you know, he went, did a lot of collaborative things with the mainland for the Shanghai Taipei um, uh, uh, conferences, meetings that, that were held. Uh, so actually, I sense that they feel more comfortable um, supporting, if you say supporting with quotation marks, uh, that they would rather see him than the other two. That said, I think that they believe that the KMT, uh, if it comes back to power in the form of Hoyoi, is certainly going to be better from their perspective than the DPP. 美国的两岸学者葛莱伊说，因为他觉得他觉得说北京比较不熟悉国民党的侯友谊，然后因为您过去有透过双城论坛跟中国有一些互动，所以他觉得北京应该会比较支持您。您觉得怎么看？我每次说我们在中美之间取得一个平衡嘛，哈，我认为我是一个有办法跟美国沟通，也有办法跟中国沟通的人。我想沟通还是很重要。我解读他的话就是说，在所有候选人当中呢，柯文哲是。最能够跟中美两边都能够沟通的人，这样这样解读就好了。就是这两天呢、啊，因为你自诩是最能跟中国跟美国对话的人，葛莱伊说你是中共最放心的人，然后你擅自解读为说是中美最放心的人，那这个举动也引来葛莱伊他的严正反驳。那我想问的是，这个扭曲甚至随意解读的行为已经造成美国反感，那？要怎么样成为让美国最信任、最放心的人？其实个人来讲是这样的，我们遇到任何攻击，我们总是要化化解攻击，转得对我方有利嘛。但只是说，因为他的原路里面就是说，哎、欸，赖清那美国对赖清德感到不安，哦，那那中国是一定反对赖清德，就不用讲了。侯友谊跟大陆也比较少来往了，哈，从过去的记录，私底下有没有我我不知道了，所以总是不熟悉。那我是这样的、啊、我我办过八次双城论坛哦，办过一次四大运。你说我们跟大陆方面哦，背后的折冲多的是啊，那多少谈判呢？你说我们美国是不是对柯文哲最信任？我倒觉得这样的、啊、最起码他知道我是一个 no surprise 的人，就说不会前面讲一套，后面讲一套，这样变来变去。I assume that Beijing has a preference in the outcome of the upcoming election. How, if at all, do you think they will try to exercise influence to uh, shape the outcome of the election? Well, I'll start by saying that I think that the Chinese are not only nervous about Lai Chengde uh, for reasons of uh, some of the things he has said in the past, his party, of course, in particular, being seen as pro-independence, uh, but also with his mayor of Tainan, that is, he's seen as coming more from the more radical end uh, of the spectrum of his party. They're also uneasy, I think, about Hoyoi. Um, he's Taiwanese. I think he reminds them of Li Donghui. <laughs> so um, uh, they don't know him very well. Uh, they do know Koenja uh, because as mayor of Taipei, you know, he went, did a lot of collaborative things with the mainland for the Shanghai Taipei um, uh, uh, conferences, meetings that, that were held. Uh, so actually, I sense that they feel more comfortable um, supporting, if you say supporting with quotation marks, uh, that they would rather see him than the other two. That said, I think that they believe that the KMT, uh, if it comes back to power in the form of Hoyoi, is certainly going to be better from their perspective than the DPP. And that is, in a few words, how close do you think we are to the edge of crisis in the Taiwan Strait? Uh, Bonnie, why don't I start with you? Maybe we can work our way down. Thank you, Ryan. Recently, U.S. administration officials have been saying that a crisis in the Taiwan Strait is neither imminent nor inevitable, and I share that view. So I'd like to associate myself uh, with that phrase. 
um, I think that there are, we need to understand that there are many variables uh, that could lead to a crisis. Um, and those variables are, of course, uh, Chinese policy, uh, but what shapes and might influence Chinese policy matters too. And that means, of course, Taiwan's policy and, uh, and U.S. policy. So I think that we should understand that China really does have red lines. Um, we could talk about what those are. Uh, but if Taiwan actually declared independence, if the United States were to restore the U.S. ROC Mutual Defense Treaty or say that we recognize Taiwan as an independent sovereign state, whether or not um, uh, Xi Jinping believed that the PLA was ready, I think he would be under a lot of pressure to actually use force. But he has not made a decision to do so. Um, in my view, he's not set a hard red line. And of course, we wrote about that uh, in our book. And so I think uh, that we are not um, close to a, a crisis. And we should start by recognizing that although we could get to a crisis, a crisis is neither imminent nor inevitable. So uh, China has a, a growing uh, toolbox of ways that they can, I think, influence Taiwan's elections. That doesn't mean it will necessarily be decisive. Uh, but in some ways may be uh, overt, in other words, may be covert. So we know in the past, for example, they have flown uh, large numbers of Taiwanese uh, businessmen back to Taiwan to vote. Of course, when people go in the voting booth, you don't know how they're going to vote. Uh, we, we used to say that the numbers of Taiwanese in, uh, in the mainland was really uncertain. Some people say one to two million. Shelley may have a better idea. Nobody knows. Uh, but probably uh, during COVID, some of those, many of them may have gone back to Taiwan as the situation there was better than, uh, than in mainland China. But of course, that's one thing they could do. They could fly some people back to, uh, to Taiwan to vote. But I think more importantly, um, what I would be watching would be their uh, influencing or attempts to influence the information space. Um, during the last few years, we have seen China uh, really uh, adapt its capabilities um, uh, to use misinformation, disinformation, which it's always used against Taiwan. Now it's really using globally. Uh, it's learned some things from Russia. Uh, and uh, I think that's a space where we should be um, uh, concerned about, particularly promoting a narrative that the DPP has not delivered good governance and the U.S. is an unreliable partner. So I think these messages potentially um, could resonate as you know, there's already this narrative about U.S. skepticism um, in Taiwan, that the United States is an unreliable partner. Always been there, but now they could amplify that. And then finally, I think we should pay attention to the subnational efforts. Um, the Chinese have already told the KMT that they will lift, and I don't know if they already have, but perhaps they have some of the restrictions that were imposed on thousands of Taiwanese agricultural products um, after Speaker Pelosi visited uh, Taiwan. So they could find ways to perhaps support some of the um, groups, whether they be related to temples or pro-China groups uh, that work locally in Taiwan. So I'd look for that as well.